When you watch big creators like Mr. Beast or Dude Perfect, your eyes are never wandering. They're always drawn right where the action is. And that's not by chance. It is an editing trick that big creators use to highlight what's important, it progresses the story, and it keeps you watching and engaged. Are we just full-scale cheating on the channel now? Instead of using narration to explain that this turtle won the race, Dude Perfect used one of the styles that we're gonna go over today to show the result rather than explaining it. You've heard the phrase show don't tell, I assume, right? This is one way to do that with tricky editing. The first type of glow effect is useful when you wanna make things shine brighter in your video. Kind of like what Mr. Beast did in this sequence. Put all that in here. This is crazy. This $50 million bunker is designed to look like you're not in a bunker. Dude. By the way, I'm gonna be showing this in Final Cut Pro, but the same steps apply no matter what editing software you use. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna duplicate this clip. So hold option, drag up, and that's gonna create a quick copy of your shot. And you're gonna trim this top clip for the duration that you want the effect to show up. So I just want the effect to be like a bright flash about this long. If we play this out, you can kind of get a sense of how long that's gonna be. That seems fine. With this top clip selected, head to your effects browser and you're gonna look up Luma Keyer. This is a free effect built into Final Cut Pro. All this effect does is allow you to cut out parts of your shot based on the brightness levels in your shot. So in your inspector window, all you're gonna do is take this shadow slider here and swing it to the far right. By the way, I kind of skipped over something here. I muted this bottom clip just by pressing V just to show you what this does. So you'll notice just by swinging this to the far right, only the brightest parts are going to be selected and you can actually bring this point in, this white point. So now we have a very bright background and that should give us a, a cool look. Maybe a little bit less here. Let's re-enable this bottom clip. With this top clip selected, go to your effects browser again and type in Gaussian Blur. We're gonna add this blur to this top clip just by double clicking. And you may notice what that's doing, although that's a bit too much. And we may even need to adjust this just so it's affecting less of our subject here. Just swinging these till we find something that we like. Maybe right about there, perhaps just a little bit less. And all we're gonna do is hop into a color wheels and raise our highlights to be brighter and maybe just pump in a bunch of a specific color to the shot. So I kinda wanna match the surrounding area, make it like a kind of like a reddish and orange. And then final thing you're gonna do here, head to your transitions browser and go all the way down to wipes and just add something like either a, you could do a clock wipe, you could do this wipe. I'm gonna add this chevron wipe to this top shot and I think I want it to be even. So just drag this on top and now we've quickly created this highlighting glow effect. And also if you want this to extend out a little bit longer, just drag this out and then reapply the end transition. Or you can also take this transition, hold option and just copy it to the end. The next type of glow effect is probably the one you're gonna use the most. And it is going to help us to create that finish line example that you saw from Dude Perfect at the beginning of this video. And another thing that you can use this method for is for something like this. <laughs> So hold option, drag up to make a quick copy. I'm just gonna trim off a little bit of this here so we have the original shot. And we are going to go to this magic wand icon and hit add magnetic mask or press control, command and M and just select uh, our, our line here. I'm holding option to deselect the areas that I don't want to be selected and then go to the top left and hit analyze. Once that's tracked, you can go to the top right and hit done, hop into your color inspector, go down to hue saturation curves and go to your hue versus hue curve. This lets you adjust the color of whatever color you want. And we're just gonna swing this master curve till we find the color that we'd like. I think a green might be nice. We'll click the video inspector again, maybe even add just a tad bit of feathering. Ooh, maybe go the other way. So this is adding some feathering to make the mask a little bit softer. And I kind of like the look of it extending outside to the right of the mask. Then head to your effects browser and you're gonna look up the glow effect. This is kind of gonna brighten things and make things appear a little more 
gamified, more Mr. Beastified. That's not quite the phrase I wanted to use, but you get the point. So if I turn this off and on, you could even dial this back if you want, but I kind of like it being a lot. Then you're gonna take this top clip and we're gonna press option, drag down to make another quick copy here. And this is a little pro trick for you. Head to your effects browser and you're gonna type in Gaussian blur. So we're gonna click that, maybe increase the blur boost a bit. And for this, head into a color wheels in your color inspector. And let's try raising the brightness and taking perhaps our global hue slider and just dumping in a bunch of the color that we want. So a bunch of green. Now we can take both of these clips, make it nice and neat, put them into their own little house by pressing option G and we'll just hit enter. That basically created a compound clip. So if you enter this, you see both of your clips. When you hop back out and you have a nice neat little house for them. And we're just gonna go two frames over. Let me zoom in here, two frames over press Command B, or for those of you who have followed my tutorials, it would just be B on your keyboard. Another two, Command B, another two, Command B, another two, Command B, and another two, Command B. So we're gonna take these and delete them. And actually, I, we didn't need to make this cut, but oh well. You know how some of these big creators have whole teams making insane visual effects? Well, there's a cheat code for us small solo creators and it is the sponsor of today's video, Artlist. Wait, wait, don't skip. Just check out these examples because these tools are actually getting so dang good and they might be very useful for you. I know they are for me. So instead of just showing this old photo of the first McDonald's in your video, you can turn it into this. It's consistent looking and quite a bit more unique and interesting for your viewers. Even better, the sound effects that you're hearing are automatically added by AI. Let's say you grabbed this shot for your thumbnail, but you want to change something in it. Our list added Google's Nano Banana model for AI image editing, so it keeps your shot consistent while only changing what you want. It removed the glasses, it perfectly swapped in a red dress for contrast against the green background like I asked, and it even added natural shadows and reflections. There is absolutely no way that I could do this in Photoshop cleanly. Here is another pretty incredible transformation, and just notice how everything stays consistent. It doesn't change the look of the camera rig at all. Maybe you're mentioning something about the California gold rush in a video. Instead of showing this boring old stamp as B-roll, you could make it look like you have a skilled VFX team to help you create this animation. Or perhaps just a static statue shot. You could make it look like the Buddha statue is actually moving all the details intact and accurate and consistent. These new updated tools on our list let you match character styles and lighting with impressive of accuracy and they open up entirely new ways to bring your ideas to life, even if you don't have a big budget or a VFX team. So click the link in the description and the comments to get two months for free. For this final style, let's take a look at this example from Dude Perfect. No, these are ducks. Yeah. The dude who collects the most ducks wins. This is the trickiest effect to do out of the bunch, but it's a good way to highlight different areas of your shot that you want to have like a cool light beam around them or by them. So I couldn't find a great stock footage shot to match this, so I decided to just take a still frame of our original Dude Perfect shot here. And then to give it some motion, we'll just add a Pro Burns preset from my buddy Dylan Bates Pro Zooms plugin pack, which is quite useful. And we're gonna create the light beams from this still frame. Now, if some of you are saying, well, yeah, that's kind of cheating, Dylan. This is a static shot, and they just added the same digital motion to this shot. So it's essentially the same thing. Their camera was in the same same spot, was not moving, and was filming their entire cool football field court thing that I want in my backyard. So step one, hop into the browser where you find your titles and skip the titles. Instead, head to the generators and find your custom generator and just gonna drag this over your footage and we'll just trim off this bit. So we want the, it to glow right in here. Make sure this is below our pro burns actually. And we are going to add a corner mask. So type in corner mask, double click to apply, and we will open up our inspector window so we can see what we got going on here. And let's start with this purple one first. Let's change the color of it. So head to this little color icon, double click, hit this little picker, and we're gonna select this purple color. And so it's a that pure purple, 
swing this to the far left. Sometimes it does this in Final Cut, Final Cut Pro dyslexia. So just drag this color swatch to this color swatch and it'll change it for you. Step two, head to your effects browser again and you're gonna type in gradient, sorry, graduated mask, double click to apply that. You have your on-screen controls here. You're gonna flip them. So the bottom goes to the top, top goes to the bottom. Now you may see what we got going on here. Do something like that. And then you're gonna head to your effects browser again, and you're gonna add a Gaussian blur. All right, now that we have the blur on, we can adjust the amount. And actually, I think we should raise it a bit more, make it taller, I mean, if we wanted to match it something similar to this shot. So. Let me just zoom out and just pull this up. Something right about there. That seems to be a good height and that looks pretty good. Now you may be saying, yeah, well that doesn't quite look like theirs does. Theirs looks neat and clean. Well, that's because we have to change the blend mode. So then we will go to add and look at that. That already does a whole bunch. And you could even hop into your color board or your color wheels and just start adjusting things. So if you want things to be really punchy, just crank up your highlights exposure slider just a little bit and then you can move it into position if you'd like. And then to do the same for the other different areas of your shot, press option and drag. And then all you're gonna do here, hop into the color palette, choose the color that you want. So we'll do this red, swing this here, move the swatch here and Take, use the transform tool to take that to put into position. Now for this, we're gonna actually need to zoom back out and make this a little bit taller for these center ones. And then you're just gonna repeat this process. Okay, to make everything nice and neat, select all these, press option G to put it into a compound clip and then head to blend mode, change to add. And once again, if you're like, ah, oh, I still wanna tweak them more, head to your highlights and just pump in and start adjusting things. But I actually think I like it as is. If we just leave it like this, hop back out. Then what I'd suggest doing is using the plugin Tap 5A by Tapio Haja. It's free, so I'll put the link in the description if you want to download it. I've talked about it a lot on this channel. It's a quick and easy way to animate things in Final Cut Pro. But there's also, if you wanted a paid version, which has more features, my buddy Brad West has one called Pro Animate, which is fantastic. But we're just gonna apply this to this compound clip. For the in animation, we're gonna do wipe from bottom. And for the out animation, wipe to bottom, and then swing the time to the far right so it's nice and slow. So now, we have something like this that looks great. And if you wanna see a few different tricks that can spice up boring footage, Give this video a watch right here. Do it. <laughs>